Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm super excited to share five DIY projects that you can create and can suit any style and home decor. So let's jump into project one. Using a faux fur yarn, this is a thick and quick type of yarn. We can stitch up a beautiful blanket in just a couple of hours. So first thing you're gonna do is make a slip knot, pretty easy. Then you wanna cast on your stitches and I am using a 25 millimeter crochet hook. Because at 25 millimeters, it's going to stitch up very, very quickly. And you're gonna cast on about 26 stitches, or at least that's what I did for this size blanket. It's really easy just to make your slip knot and wrap that working yarn around your crochet hook and you can cast on as many stitches as you like. All I wanna do is a simple single crochet. And because this yarn is so fluffy and so soft, you actually kind of have to feel where your next stitch is. It's hard to see it because it's so fluffy. You will feel with your finger the next stitch at hand. So not to worry, that's all I did was run my fingers across the new row and would feel for my next stitch. And to make a single crochet, in case you haven't done it in a long time or you never have, all you're doing is grabbing the crochet hook, slipping it into your stitch, grab the working yarn, make a loop, then you have two stitches and you're gonna make another loop to have one more stitch. It's that easy. At the end of each row, it's just really important with single crochets is to add another stitch at the end of each row. And that's all the steps to making this blanket is just rows of single crochet. So once you've made your first row of crochets, you're gonna notice that the top next stitch is actually gonna have two loops in it. I am actually just going to go into the first loop. You can go into both if you prefer, but I always just go into the first one or the second one. But just to keep it nice and simple, just go into the first one. To add a new ball of yarn as you're finished with your first one, easy, just tie a knot. I usually make mine a little bit bigger, then I'll go back and just trim off the ends. Again, just a quick reminder when you're doing a single crochet, at the last stitch, you are going to add a stitch, and then you're going to turn your entire project around and start a new row. But it's that easy. You're just gonna go in, grab your working yarn, loop once, loop twice, and move to your next stitch. It's that easy. When you're finished your rows and you're finished with your last row, at the last stitch, all you're gonna use is that little bit of a tail, and I just weave it in so that way it becomes part of the blanket as it's so thick and fluffy, you won't even see it. This was the first time I've worked with a thick and quick faux fur. So I was quite happy with the results, but I actually wanted to make the blanket a little bit wider. I was happy with the length, but I wanted the width. So all I've done is I am going to start a new row of single crochets along the side. So the pattern will actually start to look a little bit like a border, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Just start with a slip knot and carry on by just finding the first loop that you see and carry all the way down to the end. And you're just rotating the exact same thing, but you're going to the side. I ended up adding three more rows on each side to make it wider. So my blanket in total was 30 width, 45 length. I have a 
few of these random dining chairs that are not in the greatest condition, but they were great practice chairs for decorative finishes. And I thought I would try a new decorative style. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually repaint this chair in French linen chalk paint. Then I wanna do a ragging technique in old white. Because chairs are thin and tall, I love using a flat palm chip brush with painting chairs because this way my paint doesn't goop up and cause drips and clumped areas. It goes on much smoother. And I always say when painting any type of furniture, less is best. When I use chalk paint, I really prefer to have a little bit of water as I find it goes on a little smoother as it's such a thick paint. The chair originally was painted in a soft pink and now I'm using a soft taupe, so I'm only gonna need one coat. Now I've made a paint wash in a small disposable cup of 50% paint, 50% water in old white. I like to use a moist towel or shop towel. Using a moist rag or shop towel, I find this helps when I wanna go around and do a ragging technique. Because I don't wanna use a dry one because I don't want it to soak up on my paint wash, I just want it to create a really fine texture. Really important to make sure your base coat is 100% dry. So depending on your room temperature, it could take a half an hour, it could take a couple of hours. But the paint wash goes on super easy and just go around and dap your moist rag. And sometimes you might even wanna do two coats. But I just wanna show you quickly the comparison difference between the ragging technique and just a solid color. I thought it would be fun to experiment with some macrame cord, and this is the five millimeter in a cream color. And all I'm gonna do is figure eights on those two backrest pieces of wood. I made sure with my fingers that the macrame was sitting on top of each other nice and tightly, as well as pulling it nice and taut. It was also very helpful to put a little piece of tape at the end of the cord so it didn't unravel. I would use about six yards of the macrame cord at a time. Each time I ran out, I would tuck it into the figure eight, add a little bit of the hot glue, and start a new cord. I thought this was a great experiment to try a new look and a new style to a boring dining room chair that didn't even have a set to go with anymore. So it was really fun to play around with a new concept and idea. As this cord is a thick cotton, it was really important to check the front and the back that it all sat evenly on each other as I was pulling up. When I got to the top, I just made sure it was nice and tightly firmed and again, just cut and tuck into the figure eight with a little hot glue. To add to this experiment, I thought by using these throw rugs by Ikea, if I could maybe do something a little bit different with the seating. So I have two of them, but I'm only going to need one and I'm just gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna see if I can place it nice and tight onto the seating of the chair just using a staple gun. Doing an upholstery style with any type of fabric, it's really just pulling it nice and tight, stapling it firmly, as well as tucking the corners and pulling it really tight. And this will make it nice and smooth on the top and somewhat seamless. I thought it might be nice to keep the fringe, so I will use it for the front of the seat. I like to keep the staples nice and close together, and this will help that it won't kind of bunch up or cause a ripple. Now, because we are using a throw mat, it is very thick. So I did find it very helpful to use the longer staples in the staple gun. I treat the folds at the corner kind of like you're wrapping a Christmas gift. You're just gonna wanna pull it nice and tight and make sure your staples again are closely put together. For the front of the chair, I just made sure it was nice and tight as well as to fold the fringe over the front of the seat, I just used the hot glue gun. So one throw rug covered both seats.
Using the super soft, big, thick, chunky, big blanket yarn, I want to demonstrate how easy it is to make a poof or a floor ottoman. First thing you're gonna do is make a slip knot, but really important to actually leave a little length in your tail, and that's gonna be part of closing the bottom of the poof. We're gonna cast on 32 stitches, and you can do this all by hand. It's really easy. It's gonna go quite quickly. I did this whole poof in approximately just over an hour. You can make yours a little bit smaller, just cast on less stitches, and reduce the amount of rows you need. I'm going to move the tail that we started at the beginning into the first bottom loop after I've made my circle, just at that last stitch, then going around to the first bump all the way around the circle, we're just gonna cast on our next row of stitches. So you're gonna grab your working yarn and you're gonna pull it through. I'm making my stitch loops approximately two inches. So the width from my finger to my thumb, and this way when I pull it through, it's going really quickly and super fast. So again, you can do this all by hand. It goes very quickly. Once we get the rows going, we're going to need approximately 30 rows because I'm demonstrating what I would term an extra large floor poof. So now that we've got to the last stitch, we're, we're now starting a third row and I'm just going to move this along and I'm going to show you that what you're going to be doing is actually putting a fold so you won't be working in a circle. The reason you want to do that is because you want to keep your stitches close together. If you keep working in a circle, the stitches are going to get a little bit wider space. By folding it, it's going to keep it nice and tight. This is a very simple project. It's a very simple stitch. You don't need to add anything or add any new stitches. You're just gonna keep working all around your circle, but you're doing it in a pressed form. So again, this is just keeping those stitches nice and tight. So that way when you add in your filler in the middle, it won't overstretch it. So I'm gonna keep working up and again, I'm gonna make 30 rows all the same and it goes very quickly to add a new ball of yarn again you're just going to tie a nice tight knot any of the ends you can just snip those off and because this is so thick and bulky you won't even see it now that i'm done almost done my 30 rows. I just like to double count. You just count the bumps that you've made and that's going to tell you how many rows you've made. To know where you've started and where you've stopped, you go from the tail and that's going to tell you that that's your last row. So now that I've done, we're going to actually close the bottom and we're going to close the top. The bottom already has a tail and I like to give myself a little extra in the amount that I'm going to need to close. So I'm just going to stretch out a little extra yarn there at three lengths of the width of the ottoman itself. I'm using a body pillow. I have two of them and I'm going to use one, fold it in half so it's going to create this nice bulky roundness so we could actually sit on the ottoman as well. Using embroidery thread, and a thick needle, I'm actually just going to tie it nice and tight at each corner, and this is gonna create a nice round inside pillow. For your insert, you could use old pillows or blankets or whatever you may already have. To closing the bottom of the poof, all you're gonna be using is the tail that you originally had at the very beginning when you cast it on, Using the outside loop all the way around, you're going to keep wrapping that tail and pulling the stitches close together. I would wrap three, four, five stitches and pull tightly and keep going all the way around. Sometimes if your tail's a little extra, you can keep going into the stitches again and pulling it tightly. Whatever you have remainder, you can pull the rest of the tail through the little tiny hole and then you can just create a knot on the inside to secure it. And you can push it back and create a little button. 
I'm going to put my body pillow insert inside and I'm going to kind of mold and shape it a little bit and I may even add a little bit of the fiber fill. This way I can create a little bit more round and poofy shape. So to close the top, all those stitches at the very top of your rows are open. You're going to take the tail of the working yarn you've left and you're going to pull it from the inside out and keep wrapping it around. I go to about five, six stitches, then I would pull it tightly. And again, doing the same thing as we did on the bottom, this is going to pull the roundness and pull everything together into a circle. If you still have remainder amount of your tail, you can keep wrapping it into the stitches. And again, I found doing a few at a time and pulling it much easier, so this way I didn't break the working yarn. Once I had everything secured, I actually just made a knot. Anything I had left over, I made a thicker knot and shoved it into the hole, and this pushed back up and again made a button at the top to close the hole. Using IKEA faux fur throw rugs, I wanted to create some throw pillows, and I thought this would be a less expensive way to create a certain look. I would like to create an extra large and medium size throw with these two pillow inserts. I'm going to use an embroidery thread as well as a thick needle and hand stitch these. Because these throws already have a certain shape outline to them, I'm going to add to that shape to see what I could create for the throws. I'm going to cut both of them the exact same size so that way I have a front and a back to hem together. Because these are so thick and so furry, shall we call it, it's actually not too much to worry about how it's actually hemmed. You just want to use probably about half an inch from where you cut so that way all of the seam is nice and even and with the faux fur you're not even going to see your hem so I'm not too worried about how pretty it looks. I just want it nicely fastened together. doing the exact same thing I did with a smaller throw pillow, which was a 20 by 20 once everything was done. This one is going to measure out about 24 to 24 inches. And where you're going to cut, you may notice there's going to be a, some of the fur might become a little bit loose, so you can comb it and just kind of pull it so that way it doesn't shed. And once everything is actually hemmed, put your pillow insert in and because I have to do the hem from the outside, I just folded it in and created a hem working from the inside and making sure I didn't catch the pillow insert. But again, this is all washable, which makes it great, and it has such a beautiful look. I really like the fact that the smaller one turned into a little heart shape, and this one had a beautiful shape as well.
My last week's video, I completed a lower half of an old primitive cabinet. And now I want to complete the top half. And it's a lot of work because I'm removing two layers of latex paint and some stain. But it's worth it. So using a 60 grit sandpaper as well as a 120 and 220 to smooth it all out and get it back to the raw wood. I wanted to create something a little bit fun on the inside and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I'm really glad I did and I'm really glad I refurbished and recreated this piece as the final outcome turned out a lot better than I even imagined. Just like the bottom half, I'm going to do a chalk paint wash in old white just to mask out the imperfections as this wood has been worn down and it's just an old simple pine wood. It's nothing fancy and it just gives it a nice soft kind of a bleached look to the wood. My chalk paint washes are always 50% paint, 50% water and I always try to do my brush strokes as well as wiping it back with the grain of the wood. I will probably go back at least twice, maybe three times with the chalk paint wash, but depending on your project, you can always figure out one, two, or three washes, whichever you prefer. to create some symmetry inside the cabinet so I used some old cardboard that I had from a box and a plate to create a perfect half circle in the measurement of the width of this cabinet. So I'm just going to use plain pure chalk paint white, paint up the bottom of the shelf as well as the top just to clean it up. I did sand it but it wasn't sanded all the way down and I'm just going to create a nice clean look on the inside before I go and put in my half circles. I thought by doing the half circle design was a great alternative because these are planked woods. It's not one surface or if it was wallpaper would have been a great alternative just to create more dimensions and some design in the back. So just used a pencil, a small artish brush, and I created half circles just with the pure chalk paint. And I think I put on about two, three layers just so it showed up really nice and sharp. Because of the condition of this primitive cabinet, I really wasn't sure if any of this was going to turn out, but I was so delighted with the final results. With my original from last week's video, I did put on some rather large brackets and I think I overshot its size. But just to give it a little bit more of a smoked in effect to take out the hard black, I decided to add in a little white wax. I thought this was a great way to soften it out. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please let me know in the comments below which one your favorite project was or if you have any questions. I'm really looking forward to sharing a lot more DIY videos and decorative finishes. So if you haven't, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I upload a video every single Saturday morning. And until then, take care. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.